questions for reflection. In our first reading, another portion of the Apostle Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians, he's addressing another problem in that early church community. The problem was idleness and laziness. Some of the members of the church were not working. Some because they had been persuaded by false teachers that the Lord was coming soon, so why bother? Others because they had succumbed to laziness. The Apostle Paul is able to point to his own example. Even though he was an apostle, he still worked. Even in some instances, making tents. Work is not a burden, it's a blessing. Our first parents worked in the garden. And in and through Jesus, the son of a carpenter, all human work when offered to him has a wonderful dignity. We live in an age that has lost sight of the true dignity of work, precisely because we've lost sight of the dignity of the worker. And this loss is one more bad fruit of the rupture which was wrought by sin. In the industrial age, men and women were often reduced to mere instruments in a society that emphasized productivity over the dignity of the human person, the worker. The Catholic Catechism instructs us, and I quote, human work proceeds directly from the persons created in the image of God and called to prolong the work of creation by subduing the earth, both with and for one another. Hence, work is a duty. If anyone will not work, let him not eat. And the Catechism continues. Work honors the Creator's gifts and the talents received from Him. It can also be redemptive. By enduring the hardship of work in union with Jesus, the carpenter of Nazareth, and the one crucified on Calvary, man collaborates in a certain fashion with the Son of God in his redemptive work. He shows himself to be a disciple of Christ by carrying the cross daily in the work he's called to accomplish. Work can be a means of sanctification and a way of animating earthly realities with the Spirit of Christ. And it continues. In work, the person exercises and fulfills in part the potential inscribed in his nature. The primordial value of labor stems from man himself, its author and its beneficiary. Work is for man, not man for work. Everyone should be able to draw from work the means of providing for his life, and that of his family, and of serving the human community. The primordial value of labor stems from man itself, its author and beneficiary. And by means of his labor, he participates in the work of creation. Work united to Christ can be redemptive. That's the Catechism. In our responsorial psalm, David adds these words to our consideration of the dignity of work. And I quote, How blessed are all who fear Yahweh, who walk in His ways. Your own labors will yield you a living. Happy and prosperous will you be. Such are the blessings that fall on those who fear Yahweh. End quote. Our Gospel for today's Mass continues on in the strong rebuke that Jesus is giving to some of the scribes and Pharisees of His time. They were religious leaders who no longer walked the talk, but had succumbed to a form of self-idolatry. Remember, the correction, the rebuke of the Lord is always intended to move the one to whom is addressed to repentance and amendment of life. The Lord wanted to communicate a danger which can afflict all of us the temptation of succumbing to self-righteousness and pride. The Pharisee stands as a warning to any one of us who can so easily succumb to that temptation. It's a daily struggle. They prided themselves on their strict adherence to the law and believed they were being devout. Yet instead they became incapable of seeing the source and fulfillment of the law. Jesus, even as He walked and taught in their midst, we can become such men and women, even without knowing it. People do not decide to be a Pharisee voluntarily. It subtly happens, and the greatest defense we have is to stay in a fresh and ongoing, intimate communion with the Lord. This is a particularly dangerous temptation for those who consider themselves to be devout. It's such an easy trap to fall into and falls the operative word the problem is we may not know it is even happening to us before we find ourselves awakened to its corrosive effects through the bad fruit it bears within and around us.